The legal information presented on In Legal Terms is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information conveyed does not create any type of attorney-client relationship. Please consult an attorney provider before making any decisions about your specific legal questions. Welcome to In Legal Terms from MPB Think Radio. It's the show all about you and your rights. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon of the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. Hello, Professor Gershon. We are so glad to have you with us today. What What's our topic? Who's our guest today? Um, today is Baskin Jones, Liz. Good morning. I, I'm glad to have Baskin Jones back on the show. He is a great guest. Yes, he, we're going to be talking about coming of age, at least legally. And Baskins, you've been on the show before. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and your area of practice? Sure thing. I'm a uh, Mississippi born and raised uh, attorney and uh, grew up in the Delta. And then Jackson is my home now. My offices are here in Jackson. And my practice day to day is uh, to helping those who are injured. So if it's a car wreck or if it's a medical malpractice type claim, uh, these injury claims are complicated, and we guide people who've been injured through the claims process to make maximum recoveries from insurance companies. companies. Um, so uh, it's it's enjoyable, and I'm here in Jackson with my family of four, and uh, we're happy to be here. You know, it's uh, this is not in our talking points, but I ask this question. When you do a personal injury claim, when we're talking about age of majority, what if you've got a minor that's injured uh, and, you know, you've got, you know, God forbid, you know, a, a tiny child who can't make their own decisions about their legal representation? What happens in that case? Well, the default up until an individual is 21 in Mississippi is that uh, the parent gets to make those decisions. And we've got a uh, very good uh law that provides a lot of protections for minors in all sorts of different situations. Uh, there's a newer set of laws uh, we call the GAP Act, and that means guard and protect. And so Mississippi, as far as its laws are concerned, has made it very clear that we want to protect uh, the minor person all the way up until the point that they turn 21. All right. Well, let's talk about that then. We hear that term minor and age of majority. And, and what exactly do, the, do those mean under the law, and are they consistent in terms of what they mean under the law? It's, it's a mixed bag in Mississippi for certain topics, uh, topics like voting rights, marriage. Um, uh, those have lower ages, whereas uh, you know, there are different items that all happen when you turn 21, things like gambling. So uh, we can move through each of those during the show today, and that's a Again, uh, uh, sometimes you, you need to look directly at the statute in order to know who can do what in Mississippi. Yeah, and let's do, let's talk about some of those. So let's, um, for example, uh, you know, what are some of the what 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 is the age of majority um, in, in in Mississippi as compared to other states, for example? And we probably need to make that uh, caveat at the beginning that we are uh, talking about Mississippi specifically, but you know, nationwide, uh, the age of majority is typically 18 in all but three states, Nebraska, Alabama, and Mississippi. Nebraska and Alabama, the age of majority is 19, but the age of majority in Mississippi is 21. So. Uh, that is uh, different than everywhere else, but Mississippi sets 21 as the uh, point that you are considered an adult. So we want to hear from all of our listeners. This show particularly is going to impact our Mississippi listeners, but for the things that an 18-year-old can do in Mississippi, then they pretty much can do everywhere else. This morning we're talking about turning 18. What can you do? What do you have to do? What can't you do? 
what should parents do when their kids are fixing to turn 18 or maybe they're going to be going off to college or going off from the home but mama still thinks of it as their little baby what can a parent do we'd love for you to send us an email our address is legal terms at mpbonline.org well you know this, this is so interesting because you know that we we have different ages uh in the in the country for a majority and we have different ages within mississippi for certain things best can, can you talk specifically about marriage i mean when when can a person uh, get married in mississippi and what are the rules about that correct so in Mississippi, the age of consent to marry uh, with parental consent is 17 year old, 17 years old for males, and 15 year olds uh, for females. But uh, you know, once you you move on from that, uh, it's you know a question of has this person turned 21 yet? Uh, but our statute provides uh, for people who are very mature that do not have parental consent, uh, a judge can make a determination that, you know, someone has the ability to make this decision. You know, it's interesting, too, because it seems like, you know, marriage actually then uh, changes things a little bit. I know I teach Wilson Estates, and while the, you have to be 18 to make a will, the, uh, the person who is married and, and uh, you know, away from their family, um, can make a will even at a younger age. I'm interested, I wonder why the age for females is 15 with consent and for males it's higher at 17. I'm not sure what what reason there might be. Do you have any explanation? I've got some thoughts. Uh, I haven't gone and read the you know, congressional record, the Mississippi state legislature and see you know what they were debating about when they, when they decided uh, that, that was the appropriate age, but I've got a few thoughts. Um, maybe it's maybe I won't share uh, my particular thoughts <laughs> on the topic on, on air. I think that's right. I, I probably should not as well. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that we you know that are kind of we take for granted, um, like uh, drinking. Now the age is twenty one, um, and that's the age of majority. But are, are there things a child can do to act for themselves prior to twenty one? There's still uh, uh, methods at law for a child to uh, have his own legal rights in his control. You know, there is still emancipation, you know, whereby a, a child can be found uh, to no longer be under the default uh, care of his parents prior to 21. Uh, Mississippi has interesting uh, statutes on what a 18 year old can do with regard to contracts. So a 18 year old in Mississippi can sign a contract and dispose of property and do uh, other contractual things at the age of 18, rather than having to wait uh, until they turn 21. Well, you know, that, that um, you mentioned contracting and, um, you know, let, uh, what, what exactly would that involve? I mean, uh, you know, I, I, an 18 year old can, can sign a contract. Does that, does that mean that they can be involved in selling land, for example? They can be. And specifically, the statute talks about uh, dealing with property by contract. Uh, the, the interesting parts of all this uh, come that. Uh, before you turn 18, if you sign a contract, it doesn't mean that the contract is null and void. It means that the uh, person who hasn't yet turned 18, the minor, uh, has a choice of whether they want uh, to continue in that contract. It's called a voidable contract. And they can uh, act as if the contract never happened, uh, sometimes that, to their own benefit, which leaves us in some pretty interesting places legally. We have a call that's waiting. Let's go ahead and go to Sue in Beaumont. Sue, thanks for calling into In Legal Terms today. What's your comment or question? Well, I've always considered it very uh, unfair <laughs> that a person who's 18 could be drafted into the military and sent off to be killed in some military front in some war or, some, or something, but yet they're still considered minors and can't buy or drink alcohol without breaking the law. Why, why, why are 18 year olds are considered minors in some cases and not minors in other cases like where they can be drafted and sent off in the military? 
we tried it in our country. Uh, we really did. Uh, the same question uh, came up uh, right around the Vietnam War. And uh, unfortunately, an 18 year old with the ability to drink as much alcohol as they would like uh, uh, turned out not to be a good idea. Uh, we found that, you know, the vehicular deaths in that period of time were much, much higher when 18-year-olds uh, were given the ability uh, to make that decision on their own. Uh, I, I understand it, uh, and I, I tend to agree that, you know, if we're asking these 18-year-olds uh, to, to do certain things, shouldn't they be given all the, the rights uh, afforded to, to everyone else? Uh, and probably so, but we also have a responsibility to protect uh, the, these folks as they're learning to make the best decisions along the way. You know, it's kind of, a, it's a little bit of a mixed bag though, especially for universities. I know, um, you know, we have, we have fraternities on campus. We have, we have, you know, people who, despite uh, the law being a, uh, 21, that we know do drink. And so they end up with criminal records, you know, minor in possession and, and, and things like that, that, um, are unfortunate because those things follow through on that person's record, you know, often into job uh, applications, things like that. So uh, a lot of universities would, would just assume that drinking age be 18 so that we can, it's legal and, and we're not trying to police something that's illegal, but really just trying to help them with education about use and abuse and, and give counseling. Thank you for calling in. Is that the official position of the university, Richard? No, that's not the official position of the university. That's Richard Gershon's opinion, but uh, okay. <laughs> just make that clear. <laughs> Richard, do the kids have to still take an alcohol uh, assessment <clears throat> knowledge test before they enter as freshmen? I, you know, Liz, I don't know the answer to that question. Oh, okay. I wish I All did. All right. All right. We'll, we'll um, get someone. Uh, an, uh, that's, a, that's another show. That's a, that'll be another show. <laughs> We want you to send us your questions by email. Our address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We're discussing turning 18 in Mississippi. So Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Alabama, and folks listening online, listen and enjoy. Our guest is attorney Baskin Jones. So here's a here's a little some facts. Can 18-year-olds rent an Airbnb, bet on a horse race, adopt a child, donate blood in Mississippi? We're going to tell you next. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Dr. Nancy Lotridge-Anderson, president of New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advising firm and co-host of Money Talks. For over 10 years, Money Talks has been answering your personal financial questions and sharing knowledge about money management. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. This is In Legal Terms. Not everyone has a chance to listen to our show live, so if you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show. Inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. It's also available on the MPB Public Media app, as are all our local shows. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. Okay, in Mississippi, you can rent an airbnb at 18 you have to be 21 to bet on a horse race and that's also the same age to adopt a child but you only have to be 16 to donate blood and i know that a lot of the blood drives have been extra low when we haven't been in school because of the pandemic so just as a 
public service announcement. I know the blood banks are extremely low, and if you are over 16 and are medically able, please go and donate blood. This morning, we're talking about turning 18. What can you do? What should you do with our guests, our guest attorney, Baskin Jones? And if you want to know more about him, his firm's website is injured in Mississippi.com. And that's I N, not just the letter N, like he's a 15 year old or something. Injured in Mississippi.com is the website for Baskin Jones's firm. We've got a couple of calls. Let's go ahead and go to Joe, who has called in f- from Oxford. Hi, Joe. Thanks for calling in to In Legal Terms today. What's your comment or question? Hey, guys. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I work in a restaurant, and I have a 19-year-old employee who talked about wanting to bartend, and I said, no, you got to be 21 to do that. And then he brought up this thing where apparently in Mississippi you can, quote, wave your minority and then bartend. And all of my Google Foo found nothing, but uh, I just went ahead and said, nah, it sounds kind of a little out there. I don't think that's real, but good luck. So is that a thing that exists is my question. Ooh, Baskin, Mississippi Section 67-3-54, uh, our number 18 question about work in a bar and serve drinks. What did your research find out? Absolutely. I, I'm not sure I would uh, have him behind the bar, but uh, his ability to uh, receive uh, these orders uh, to uh, work uh, in a bar or restaurant, bus tables, serve tables, stock shelves with alcohol. Uh, he can do that at 18. Now, uh, probably not behind the bar there. I got you. That's what I, that's what I was just have him doing. I just have him serving and busing right now. But, uh, yeah, he wasn't the only person I've ever heard that from. So I was like, maybe it's a thing. But it just kind of sounded like a load to me. We, we do have uh, some interesting laws uh, of things people can do prior to the age of 21 with parental consent uh, or with uh, uh, in the in the household rather than at the restaurant. So, you know, parents can uh, make a determination of whether their child should have a sip of alcohol uh, even before they turn 21. But uh, if you're if you're a business, I would steer clear. Thanks, Joe. We appreciate you calling in. Let's go next to Mobile and speak with Jennifer. Now, uh, Jennifer, we're mostly talking about Mississippi laws, but we'd love to hear your comment or question. Yes, thank you for having me. I just really have a comment, and I know that um, you guys really can't do anything about it, but it's just a thought that I had while listening to the show and seeing how 21 is the age that you're an adult in Mississippi, yet um, a lot of minors go to jail after being tried as adults in the state of Mississippi, you know, like 16-year-olds and 15-year-olds. And, I, you know, I just wanted to make a comment that that's kind of crazy because if we look at it in terms of being an adult, you know, 15, 16, you're definitely still a child. So I just wanted to um, comment on that and also, you know, just get people to kind of think about that. Thank you so much. I'll listen. Thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate you calling in. And this is when we remind folks to call or write your representatives and senators to let them know your opinion, because they're the ones that make our laws or appoint our judges and uh, to be an informed electorate. Thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate your call. You know, uh, and that's a, that actually was a great point, Liz, in terms of criminal justice reform. And I know we have uh, uh, organizations here in Mississippi that are working towards that end. So Jennifer's comment, we really appreciate Jennifer's comments a lot. Um, you know, Baskin, I know um, we're, we're talking about um, some of the laws, uh, you know, 21 and people working in bars, things like that. I was surprised, actually, uh, that 18-year-olds can go to a bar. They can't drink in a bar, but they're allowed to actually go to a bar um, 
Uh, that was surprising to me. But what I was most surprised about is I, I, I drink non-alcoholic beer because it's a great way to rehydrate after a hot run. And I got carded. I'm 64 now, and I got carded. Uh, I had to give my birth date to get some uh, alcohol, uh, alcohol-free beer. That was surprising to me that you can't buy that if you're under the age of 21. Um, so it's, uh, the laws are interesting. But, I mean, we, I, can we talk a little bit about some things that people could do um, for their child when their child turns 18? You know, if you're a parent, uh, what, what kind of documents should we be thinking about when a child turns 18? Yeah, there's, there's two that immediately come to mind. Uh, the first one being uh, a health care proxy or, you know, an agency form or a medical power of attorney. Uh, all these are words for the same thing that uh, it's a, a document that makes it very clear uh, who is responsible for the health care decisions of this person. And, you know, especially if the person is not able in a moment to make a decision on their own. So uh, these health care directives where you uh, talk about it beforehand and determine uh, the sorts of you know, life helping uh, care that can be given. Uh, those sorts of decisions are always better uh, beforehand. So we recommend that parents go ahead and have these conversations. And the, the child has the ability to sign a contract after they turn 18 or to give some of these powers to someone else without court intervention. So that's, that's one that would be very helpful. The second, you know, especially if your child is going off to, to college that might be helpful would be a HIPAA release. You know, HIPAA uh, at some point in a child's life uh, terminates the parent's ability to be directly involved in getting their medical records or hearing from their doctors and having that signed HIPAA release giving a parent the ability to uh, request these documents would be very good. I'm going to post some forms of uh, each of those uh, for free on the website. Uh, I, I probably do need to go registered, injured, letter in, Mississippi.com. <laughs> now, now that you've said it live on air, someone is uh, hastily trying to register that domain name. But uh, I'll happily put some free forms up there that if a parent you know, wanted to fill out a HIPAA form, uh, for instance, that, that can be a resource to get that type of information. That's so great. And, you know, really, those forms are easy to fill out. I, I, I give the state of Mississippi credit for creating forms that are real, do a great job explaining what they are, and it really is a check-the-box kind of form. So uh, everyone should have one. Um, I actually make my wills and estates classes do one. They all have to do one before they can take the exam because – you know, it, it, they may have them when they come to school, then they don't have to do another one, but the ones who don't have it need it. And so I'm, I'm real happy that you're going to post that information. That That is, is great. Could you talk a little bit about the difference between a durable power of attorney for health, medical uh, reasons, and, and uh, financial dur durable power? So, you know, these documents uh, give a lot of rights. You're able to give a lot of rights to someone else as a power of attorney. And... Uh, so the wording of some of these documents can be very, very, very broad. So uh, before you sign anything, uh, take a very close look at what you are signing. Is I've seen form language in these forms that you know was intended to be, let's say, a medical type power of attorney, and it also gave the ability to control bank accounts, for instance. Uh, so. Uh, there are forms that are, do generally give some of these powers or take certain powers, but uh, my recommendation would always be, regardless of if it says on the top that it's just for you know medical decisions, to uh, take very close uh, notice of what is actually contained in the document. We'd love to get your questions or comments by email. The address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We're talking with attorney Baskin Jones about what a parent might need to know about their kid turning 18. When you turn 18, can you drive a taxi or could you work full time in the school year? We're going to find out next. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio.
a contractor ever tell you the price of something and it sounds so high you think, eh, maybe I'll try it myself. Some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Professor Richard Gershon is our expert host. I'm Liz Gill. We do hope you'll subscribe to our podcast. So many different podcasting platforms out there. I happen to like Podcast Addict. I downloaded it to my phone. I touch a plus, and it took me to a page to search for all kinds of podcasts. You can just type in the name, type in In Legal Terms, I-N Legal Terms, in the search area, and it brings up the image of our show. I'm able to touch that photo, and then I can touch subscribe, and I'm notified when any new episodes are loaded up. Hey, you can do the same thing. Our podcasts are on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you can just find MPB Think Radio's channel and subscribe. Then you'll get all the MPB local radio shows when they're loaded up. Now, in Mississippi, you have the right to get a commercial license to drive a taxi or a truck in the state at 17. And there are no restrictions on hours for children to work at 16 and up. This morning, we are talking about what you should and what you can do when you turn 18 with our guest, Attorney Baskin Jones, who who was on our show January 26th, 2021, when we talked about cycling and insurance. You know, it's great to have Baskin back. And, you know, Baskin, what about, talk, let's talk about voting. I mean, you know, we, we emphasize on the show the importance of, of voting when, uh, when there are elections. And, uh, and I mean, I'm sure everyone knows that 18 is, is the voting age. But what about, what is that all about? Exactly. And, and when does, you know, like I'm turning 18 this year at the end of the year, but I'm not 18 yet. Can I register? Things like that. Correct. You know, it's sometimes the easiest, uh, you know, there's, I'm surprised uh, these days how easy it is to register to vote. And I think it's a great thing, uh, you know, on campus. Uh, uh, Richard, you probably see that the bus pull up every so often and get folks registered. In Mississippi, yes, 18 is, is our age. Uh, with being in the county in which you uh, wish to register to vote for 30 days prior to registering, and uh, we've got some restrictions for individuals that have been you know, convicted of a felony uh, uh, as far as their uh, ability to vote. But yeah, for the most part, Mississippi is uh, very open uh, when it comes to who should be uh, allowed to be registered. And that's important because we, we want people to participate in our democracy. And, and, and let's talk about the military because that's, you know, uh, Stu called earlier and, and talked about people joining the military. Um, what's the earliest age you can join the military? You can join at 17 uh, with parental consent and then at 18 without parental consent. Uh, and that's you know, actually federal code. Uh, so we've got requirements uh, for our young people uh, to uh, register for selective service. Uh, I remember that. Uh, it felt like maybe 10th grade, something along those lines, where they started talking to us about, you know, before before you take these standardized tests, you know, be sure to, to register for selective service. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's interesting. What, uh, Sue's point was about drinking and the military, and, you know, uh, uh, we do have a pretty high drinking age. A lot of countries around the world are, do not have as restrictive a drinking age. I spent some time in Israel, and for example, that's you know that's you can drink at a much earlier age there. Um, and but everybody there is drafted in the military. You can't go into you can't go to college until you serve in the military. So you know different uh, different approaches to both military and and drinking. Um, uh, what about, uh, you mentioned registering for the selective service. Um, do both women and men have to do that now, or is it just women? I mean, just matter. Well, uh, you know, it is, the statute still reads uh, male person uh, registering, but, you know, I think there is a push here lately uh, that uh, 
what what would be fair uh, under the statute. Uh, so we're looking at U.S. Code 5049 and 3802 in subsection A. The wording, uh, to my knowledge, has not changed yet, but I have heard those discussions of, uh, of who uh, should be required to be registering uh, in selective service. It's, uh, it, that'll be an interesting thing to follow. And, you know, we, we just started a lottery here uh, in in uh, Mississippi. A lot of states have had it for a while. But what's the age that someone can buy a lottery ticket? We're still operating at uh, 21 years of age. Uh, you're right, it is uh, relatively new, uh, similar with sports betting in the, in the state that um, the, the laws in our state are changing. Uh, there are still areas that uh, 18 is the age as compared to 21. This one is still 21 years old. Yeah, that's it. So what, uh, you know, what would happen if I, if I own a, uh, let's say I own a place that sells, you know, I'm a, I'm a uh, person who's authorized to sell lottery tickets and I sell to a minor, will I get in the same kind of trouble that I would get if I was selling a drink to a minor? Well, uh, the statute says uh, you would be fined not less than $100 for uh, selling that lottery ticket. So, uh, but that's just for the first offense. So if you were a habitual lottery ticket salesman to people under the age of 21, uh, those fines could quickly start stacking up against you. Professor Gershon, you better be careful. You'll get carded when you go to buy your scratch-off ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, and, and I, I have to be totally honest about that. They asked my birth date. I think they had to put it in the system. You know, it was, it was at Kroger, and they were you know, putting, putting in information. They said, tell me your birthday, and I realized what they were doing. But um, I was also prohibited on a Sunday morning. I, got, I was trying to buy some uh, non-alcoholic beer Sunday morning before 11, and I didn't realize that they won't sell it to you prior to 11 because they're not allowed to sell alcoholic beverages prior to 11 on Sunday morning. I'm not sure what, well, I don't know. I didn't understand all the laws. I really blue don't laws, <laughs> blue laws are <laughs> another topic we should have on in legal terms. Baskin, this next number that we're talking about for 18 year olds turning 18, what you can do, what you can't do. This was highly discussed uh, in the radio department yesterday is you uh, to get a body piercing or a tattoo without parental consent that you can do that when you're 18, but parents cannot consent to children getting a tattoo before 18. And I think if you looked at any uh, high school basketball teams, uh, I don't I don't know that this law is one that's being enforced too much. Well, you know, I, I've got four children. And I, uh, if I, for whatever reason, decide that all four of these kids need to have matching tattoos, uh, uh, you, you can imagine uh, the sort of uproar that that might cause. So I, I'm, I'm typically okay. Uh, I, I do see it, you know, playing out a lot differently. I, I'm not sure it is going to be authorized, licensed uh, tattoo parlors that are doing these uh, tattoos for people that would be under the age of 18. But it's an interesting topic. Uh, but I'm not sure I, uh, you know, be forcing children or you know allowing children before the age of 18. That they do let you do the piercings. I don't know how many tiny babies. I've seen with uh, little girls that have had their ears pierced. And in fact, I was with a friend who is from India and her grandchildren, her, her kids were born here and her grandchildren were born here, but they, they just couldn't figure out why the, the baby granddaughter hadn't had uh, her ears pierced yet. So I guess that is a not a, a, a double negative. Parents can allow can give permission for body piercings. Well, uh, Basket, you know, we talked about a little bit about signing a contract. Um, and, you know, um, someone who is 18 can sign a contract. Um, what about also, uh, you, you have you know, minors, uh, you talked about how their parent or their guardian would, would have to uh, work with you uh, if they were in a personal injury suit. But what about uh, signing a settlement agreement? How old do you have to be to sign a settlement agreement? 
So the, the statute is pretty clear that, you know, dealing with your own property uh, is allowable at 18 by contract. And uh, the current reading of that is that 18 year olds are able to settle their personal injury lawsuit uh, by themselves. But uh, there's a lot of benefit that can be had for an individual, for a minor who is hurt to utilizing the protections we have in place for minors. So this GAP Act uh, potentially provides some additional shielding for that minor where, you know, if you've got a large injury, if you've been hurt very badly, and there's a limited amount of insurance available, we can protect uh, what the minor is able to get and uh, do so very effectively. So that's something we, we think about very closely is trying to make sure our people, our clients get uh, the maximum recovery available. Also, let's talk about another area that uh, people want to change their name, for example. Um, how, when, at what age does someone have to be to, to have uh, an official name change? So if, the, if an individual is attempting to change their own name, uh, it is 21. Now, there are uh, instances where, uh, you know, parental consent, uh, you can uh, motion the chancery court for a name change uh, with everyone in agreement that the changing should happen. You know, sometimes these adoptions uh, involve a name change as well for a minor. So the power is certainly there. There's a little more process involved uh, if you do it prior to 21. And, and you know, maybe you got someone who is, uh, you know, you, they can work uh, at 16, there are no restrictions on working, and maybe they want to invest in, in stock and, and open a brokerage account. Can they do that? In Mississippi, the age is 21. Uh, we are, uh, there's folks out there doing pretty risky things uh, on the stock market. So uh, and I'm not sure 18-year-olds uh, taking their financial future into their hands. Uh, I agree with the 21-year-old uh, on this one. But I want to jump in. I also produced Money Talks, heard on MPB Think Radio at 9 a.m., right preceding this show on Tuesday mornings. And we have talked about if you have a child who has earned income, they were a lifeguard, they babysat, they invented an app, whatever kind of earned income, then a parent could open a Roth IRA in that child's name and contribute the uh, uh, equal amount of money that the child earned and invest that uh, so that it grows tax-free. And that is Liz Gill's financial advice, not a registered uh, financial analyst. But if that is something that you're interested in, do check that out with your uh, financial advisor. Absolutely. And that, that, that's a great point. You can also open a custodial account for a minor and uh, or you know, under, uh, my, many states have a gifts to minors act that you can do that. So there are ways to around that. But I find it interesting that the the. the 18 year old can't uh, make that decision themselves. But as Baskin said, maybe that's they, they take too much risk. But speaking of risk, what about, you know, slicing meat at a grocery store or, uh, you know, at the deli counter? Right. So uh, there are certain jobs in this world that are uh, more hazardous than others. And uh, I think, you know, it came through the Industrial Revolution that we're very concerned about children doing dangerous jobs. But this is one that would be considered a hazardous occupation uh, by the Secretary of Labor and uh, is protected under child labor laws. So we, we keep, uh, you know, those folks under the age of 21, in Mississippi at least, from uh, doing that sort of hazardous job. We can take your questions on our email account. The address is legalterms at mpbonline.org. We've got a few more rights and responsibilities to tell you about when you or a loved one turns 18. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio.
Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, Professor of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. On the original Southern Remedy, we answer questions about all aspects of your health and share some of the latest medical information in the news. You can listen to the show on Wednesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and depends on the support of listeners like you. If you can, please donate today at mpbonline.org. And thanks. Thank you for being part of our show of In Legal Terms. If you have missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. It's also available on the MPB Public Media app, as are all our local shows. And hey, hit subscribe on that MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. At 11 a.m. Central on Tuesdays, following this over-the-air broadcast, you can hear Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking, with Dr. Susan Buttress on MPB Think Radio. Now, when you turn 18, you are allowed to vote. And if you're going to be, you can register before you turn 18 if you'll be 18 by the election or by the runoff. When you turn 17, you can join the military with parental consent. It's 18 otherwise. And if you are a male, it is your duty to register with selected service at 18. We're talking with attorney Baskin Jones about what you should, can, and can't do at 18. We've got a call. Let's go to Madison and check in with Jackie. Jackie, thanks for calling in to In Legal Terms today. What's your comment or question? Well, I have a question that it doesn't have to do with 18-year-olds. It has to do with an 83-year-old sibling that I'm conservator for, and she has no will, and we have one other sister who lives in Texas who does nothing, no phone calls, no cards, nothing. Um, I'm moving my sister to, uh, I actually have moved her to North Carolina, so I'm having to go through the conservatorship all over again. But I was told by my attorney up there and friends that I should be uh, compensated for the amount of time for five years now that I've been putting in. So I've been doing a log, and I'm going to present that to the judge when, before I move her from Mississippi. But what what does one, uh, I don't need the money, but it takes a lot of time from my own family and from my life, and um, I frankly resent the fact that my other sibling does nothing, and yet with no will, she'll share if there's anything left over in anything assets that my uh, disabled sister has. So any suggestions? I looked online. It said 5% of the uh, income for a year, and then I talked to an elder law attorney and said, no, 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 that's way outdated. <laughs> that's not what you do. Any yeah, it is, so we uh, have provisions in our guardianship conservatorship statute for those doing the actual work of uh, making the process work to uh, have a rate. And uh, yeah, it would not be limited by that percentage necessarily, certainly. Uh, it'll be an hourly rate of some sort based on the time in your log. And you know, it would only be amounts that the guardianship is able to support from right. the, the proceeds that fall under the guardianship. So that's absolutely appropriate and uh, provided for by our statutes. Okay. Well, I know it'll be different in North Carolina, but the North Carolina elder law attorney said I need to complete all of that here in Mississippi before I move her. But um, I don't need the money, but what I would want to do, and my sister's talked about having any assets that are left to go to education for her niece and nephews. And so I would put it in another account, and if she needs it, it would go to her, and if she doesn't need it, it would go as she wishes to an education fund, but she's not capable. Uh, it would be challenged if she tried to write a will. So I'm trying to find a way to be comfortable with what I'm doing. And um, I've logged as much time as I can, but I spend so much time dealing with my sister that it's not possible to 
calculate completely, and um, it's it's really a very very exhausting uh, process to go through. I would really tell people to think long and hard before doing it, but I had to do it to keep her off the highways driving. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, so you're just saying consult the attorney and the judge and go with that. Right, and those uh, you know, estate and will type decisions, uh, you want you know an attorney that is has done several for people with conservatorships. There are right. some cons- considerations in the state of how to make sure a will is going to be valid when you have somebody that is uh, part of the conservatorship. So right. things like making sure the conservator, uh, the conservatorship is actually paying the fee for the attorney that prepares the will making sure there's uh, interaction between that attorney and your sister directly without your involvement. Um, yeah. that, those, those are things that go into the considerations of a valid will. Yeah, that, that's really not possible. She's schizophrenic and the pandemic has kept her isolated, which has furthered the paranoia. And I mean, it, she was wonderful about a year and a half ago and now it's really gone downhill terribly. So that's not possible anymore. So I'm just trying to make sure that I can cover whatever I need to. So just log as much of my own time, mileage and things like that as I can and go with it. Thank you. Whatever, yeah, whatever is appropriate based on the, the work you've been doing. Thank you, Jackie. I think as you grow as an adult, you learn how much you have to learn to help uh, take care of your family. And I, I'm I'm sure it, it, it's hard for Jackie. Thank you so much for calling in today. And we are just about out of time. Uh, Baskin, I may give you a call later, and we, maybe we will do just a little bonus podcast because we've got quite a few others. Let's do um, just do a, a, a couple more. What about jury duty? Jury duty. Our number 20. Number 20. Right. So in Mississippi, Mississippi Code 13 5-1, everyone over 21 years of age uh, could be called. And usually that goes off of voter rolls uh, in the county where you're currently living. So if you're on the voter rolls, you might very well get uh, called up for jury duty. And another one that's also uh, rife for, uh, I don't know, movies and things, well, unfortunately, not anyway uh number 22 to have sex legally with someone over 18 what is uh the statute say in mississippi it's complicated (laughs) (laughs) we'll leave it at that and here is our music thank you baskin jones attorney for being on our show today my pleasure That's going to wrap us up for today's In Legal Terms. Thank you, Michelle McAdoo and Java Chapman and Jay White for helping put this show on. For Professor Richard Gershon, who does host from the University of Mississippi School of Law, I'm Liz Gill. But hey, join us next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central for In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. 